Hey guys, I'm glad you're with me today. We have been looking at the life of Solomon for the past few weeks. Now he was the son of King David that took over for King David after he died. Some of the things that we've learned about Solomon so far are like when God told him he could have anything he wanted, asked for, and Solomon asked for wisdom instead of asking for fame or for wealth or for even a long life, and that pleased God. And then last week, we learned that Solomon was responsible for building a beautiful temple dedicated to God. This temple provided a special place for God's people to come and not only worship God, but to know His presence was with them here on this earth. So from what we've learned so far about Solomon, he seems like almost a perfect king, but that isn't the case. And in today's video, we're going to learn and see what happened that caused Solomon's downfall. So let's watch the video really close and we'll talk about it in a few minutes. King Solomon loved God, but he did not love God with his whole heart. Solomon had hundreds of wives and many of them were from other nations. Solomon's wives turned him away from God and he began to worship the false gods that his wives worshiped. God was angry. God said to Solomon, since you have done this, I will take the kingdom away from you. You will be the king the rest of your life. But when your son becomes king, he will lose everything except for one tribe. When Solomon died, his son Rehoboam became king. The people told Rehoboam, your father, Solomon, made us work too hard. We will gladly serve you if you make our work easier. Rehoboam thought about it and asked his father's friends for advice. Be kind to the workers and they will work for you forever, they said. But Rehoboam ignored that advice. He asked his own friends what he should do. Rehoboam listened to his friends and told the workers, my father did not make you work hard enough. I'll make you work even harder. The people did not want to serve a king like Rehoboam, so they made Jeroboam king. Jeroboam had been one of Solomon's officials. Now he was king of the northern kingdom of Israel. Only one tribe remained under Rehoboam's rule, and that was the southern kingdom of Judah. Rehoboam did not like being king of only one tribe. He planned to attack the northern kingdom of Israel, but God sent a prophet to stop him. The prophet had a message from God. Do not fight them. The people of Israel are part of your family. I am the Lord and I am in control of what is happening. So Rehoboam went home. Now, Jeroboam was the king of Israel, but he wasn't a good king. When the people of Israel traveled to Jerusalem to worship God at the temple, Jeroboam worried that they would start thinking of Rehoboam as their leader. So Jeroboam made two golden calves and told the people, going to Jerusalem is too difficult for you. Here are your gods who brought you up from the land of Egypt. You can worship them. What Jeroboam did was a sin. Those calves did not lead God's people out of Egypt. God led his people out of Egypt. Jeroboam led all the people to worship the false gods instead of the one true God. King Solomon failed to lead God's people perfectly. God's people needed a better king, a perfect king. Through David's family, God would send his own son, Jesus Christ, to be a perfect king over God's people forever. Jesus is greater than Solomon. Jesus brings his people together and leads them back to God. That video made me very sad. The story starts with God's people being one nation and ends up with them being divided. So what happened? What caused the Israelites to become two nations? Was it Solomon's fault? Or was it his son's fault that the nation was divided? Maybe it was both of their faults. But I know that Solomon was much to blame. See, God was angry with Solomon. Do you know why? The Bible tells us that he married hundreds of women who worshiped false gods. And when he married those women, he began to worship false gods. 
That made God very unhappy. Solomon let those women cause his heart to not be fully devoted to God. His love for God became diluted and, and God was very sad. So God told Solomon, you know, I am going to take this nation away from you. Not completely, but you've disappointed me. And so your son will not rule over the whole nation of Israel. Do you know who his next son was that was going to rule? It was Rehoboam. And Rehoboam should have ruled over the whole country of Israel. But in fact, he didn't. He had the opportunity to rule over all of Israel. But after his father died, the people came to him and said, we need you to be easier on us. Your father drove us so hard, but if you will make things easier for us, we will serve you as king our whole lives. Well, guess what? Rehoboam thought about that and he thought, come back to me later and I'll give you an answer. And in the meantime, he went to see his father's advisors and they said, yes, that would be very wise. Make things easier and they will serve you as king. But the younger friends of his, when they gave their advice, they said, you should make things harder on them, not easier. Who do you think he listened to? He listened to the younger men and he gave, was not a good choice. Their advice was not wise. He made things harder on them and the people rebelled against him and made somebody else their king. They chose Jeroboam to be their king. That left Rehoboam with only one tribe to serve him. It was Judah. I've wondered many times, why didn't God just allow Solomon's son to have none of them? If he was going to take all of the tribes away but one, why didn't he just take all of the tribes away and give, make somebody else king like he had done for Saul? And then I remembered, God made a promise to David. And, David, and God always keeps his promises even when people sin. Do you remember what that promise was? He said, David, the Messiah will come through your family. Somebody on, from your family, David, will rule on the throne forever. And that's exactly what happened. God sent Jesus as our Messiah. And guess who Jesus was a descendant of? He was a descendant of David from the true tribe of Judah. Jesus is the perfect King of Kings, and He will be King of Kings forever. So what happened today in everything we saw was the consequences of sin. We saw that Jeroboam, I'm sorry, that Rehoboam and Solomon did not love God with their whole hearts. And by the way, neither did Jeroboam. They let their love for God become diluted. So I want to show you an experiment I brought over here that can kind of help us see what it would be like if we let our hearts be diluted. Let me gather up my supplies and I'll turn the video right back on. I think I have everything that we've needed. So I'm going to adjust the camera so that you can see this glass that's sitting right here. Okay, I'll move that so you can see that. So we're gonna let this glass and this water that I put in the glass represent our heart. And we're gonna let this red food coloring represent the love we have for God. So what happens when we um, add love for God into our hearts? What color does the water turn? It turns red, doesn't it? And if we keep adding love for God, the water just gets redder and redder and redder. And we, want our heart to be fully devoted to God, to be full of love for God. But here's what happens sometimes. Sometimes we add things to our lives that don't have anything to do with God, which they're not bad. So we're gonna let them represent just plain water. There's no coloring in this. But let's look at what happens when we fill our lives up with things that have nothing to do with God. Look at what happens to the color in the water. Does it get darker? Or lighter it gets lighter it's just a pink now it's not bright red anymore Let's see if you can see it see it has become diluted 
And that's what happened to Solomon and to Rehoboam. They let their love for God become diluted. They filled their life with other things that became more important. But not only did they do that, they put some things into their life that were really bad, like worshiping false gods and doing bad things. So we're gonna let those things be represented with the, the blue food coloring. So I've added some blue food coloring here to this jar. I'll put a little bit more in there. And we'll say that that was them worshiping false gods. And then when Rehoboam made work so much harder on his people and did not listen to wise advice, that was not good. So our water has turned pretty dark. Well, now if we put those things in our heart, what happens to our hearts? Does it stay full of God's love or is it influenced and colored by what we put in it? It is, isn't it? And you know what? The more we disobey God, the more dark our lives become. Now, let me ask you a question. How can we get rid of that? How can we take the dark out of our lives? Can we do it ourselves? Well, I guess we could pull this over here and empty part of it. But look what color the water still is. It is still dark, isn't it? We need something greater than that. And luckily we have something greater than that. We have the love of God and the love of Jesus. So let me pour some of God's love back into our lives. When he gave us Jesus, he showed us his love. And you know what? What happened to our hearts? They became pure again, didn't they? Look at that. That water looks ex as clean enough to drink. Now it's our job to keep adding our love for God back into our hearts. Because when we do that, guess what color it becomes? It becomes red again. We want our hearts to be full of love for God. And we can have our hearts full of love for God because he has his love. He fills our lives with his love. I think that we should thank him for that today. So if you guys will end with uh, a prayer with me. And let's just remember to keep our lives fully devoted to him. And to not let them become diluted with evil or with anything else in this world. Let's pray together, okay? Let's pray. Dear God. We love you so much, and we are so grateful that you keep your promises, even when we fail you, God. Please help us to love you with our whole hearts. Help us to always serve you, and God, forgive us when we fail you. It's in your son's name I pray. Amen. All right, guys. Work on having your hearts fully devoted to God this week. And you keep adding in time spent with him. Keep adding in more of God's love, your love for God. And your heart can stay fully devoted to him. Don't let it become diluted with things of this world. All right, love you guys, and I'll see you Wednesday night on video or next Sunday at church.